Everybody, welcome to the latest edition of Latinas okay, Chat Media. Hi. The brunch edition. <laughs> we are, well, we're always excited about everything we discuss, but we're particularly amped about uh, three topics today. The first is, Lati is Latina Magazine still relevant? Hmm. And then we're going to talk about J-Lo's latest song and video, Ain't Your Mama. <laughs> y pa que no diga that we're always criticizing. <laughs> we're going to end the segment, each of us sharing with you a piece of Latina media content creators that we absolutely love and recommend that you follow and support. Yes. So let's start with Latina Magazine. <laughs> I see Linda got her phone. <laughs> and it's funny because I want to start off with you, Linda, because you really set this off because there was something that really grinded your gears with Latina Magazine and you posed the challenge to them. So let folks hear it in case they missed it. Um. Okay. So... Uh... Are we talking about the Kim Kardashian post? Kim Kardashian versus- I think that's where it started, yeah. Like that, yeah. There, there was the reaction to that and then you posted the challenge. Right, I, it, the, there's lots of times where I see the Latina magazine feed and I go, why, 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 why? It's become uh, just like any other trashy web site that, you know, all, all they do is gossip and, just silly crap. I just think we should be talking about more inspiring things. But anyway, it was worded a certain way and it threw me off and it turned me off. And it was um, something about somebody's big ass is bigger than the other. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow. And you know what? If you look at the comments, there were there are a lot of people that have serious things to say about that content. I don't know if they're listening to them or what, but it just, maybe it's my age. And then I thought, is it that I'm older and I expect more from them? So, you know, I went, I, I, I had the you know, link to the media kit here. I'm gonna get it um, to see what the demographic is for this magazine. Or what um, they think it is too, because well, there's two things going on here. There's the online edition. I'm getting it for you right now. And I'm going to put it in this uh, right here in the comment section. So there, okay. there it is. So there are two things here. The online um, age demographic is 34, the median age. Okay. The print is 36. This is not 18 to 24. Right. And they're... It says that ninety percent of their audience um, attended college. Eighty-one percent really are employed. Interesting. I would it's have thought it's younger. Yes, yes. Yeah. Because I started feeling like, well, is it me? So if the median age is thirty-four, thirty-six between digital and print, and I can see digital being a little younger. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. but but you know what? Mm -hmm. That's kind of changing in time. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So it's it's interesting to me that they choose some of the topics to talk about that I think skew more to a younger, a much younger audience. That's my take, and I, and I, and you know I have history with Latina Magazine. Back in the '90s, I was very excited about the magazine, and I had the opportunity to be a freelance writer. I wrote um, I don't know about five or six pieces for them, I think in the mid nineties. And um, I always had a problem with something, whether it was that they weren't showcasing darker Latinas enough, right. mm -hmm. or the content wasn't really sweet. So I wonder if Latina Magazine can be the be all for us. And is it trying to be the be all? Um, I mean, we're expecting too much from that one source. The sound, the sound is we're, we're expecting. Me. Sorry. It's like, it's like what we did with J-Lo. Like, we're expecting J-Lo to answer all our questions, solve all our problems. 
And may we may be doing that with Latina Magazine. It's, no, it's, you know what? Can I jump in real quick? Sure. Honestly, I don't think we're expecting too much of it at all because that's that is its mission is to speak. You know, if you if you're saying that you were Latina Magazine, you're taking on that yoke of responsibility of speaking for at least a large portion of Latinas. So I'm not. I absolutely am. I'm only holding them to what they themselves saying are saying they do. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, first of all, they're showing a huge ignorance as to how to run a publication. If that's your median age, then take you know tailor to that median age. But mm -hmm. you're showing absolutely zero insight into who your demographic is, what their age group is, you know what's important to them, and you're also not listening to vital you know feedback. If people are mm -hmm. telling you if they're on your social media and they're telling you this is offensive, you're not showcasing us enough. For the love of God, you know, find out what your wheelhouse is and friggin, you know, drive that, you know, ride that wheel because you're not doing it at all. If people, and also, you know, in this day, again, I'm going to go back to social media. That's an important way to get critical feedback on how you're doing. And if you're not listening, then you're showing a blatant disregard for your audience. And that's just, you know, that's my two cents. But mm -hmm. see you jump in. <laughs> what? Look, I, I just killed the lab. Everybody's like, <laughs> um, <laughs> drop mic. <Mike. laughs> I think, I know, it's just like I'm taking it all in, taking it all in. Um, all right, I do want to say before I start that I see a delay and I'm also getting some funky sounds, so just FYI. Um, when I, when Latina first started 20 years ago, I guess now, right, 1996, mm -hmm. um, I was really excited about them. I felt like we were, Latinos were kind of always relegated to either following black magazines or white magazines for anything, for beauty, for entertainment, for what have you. Um, so I was excited about the possibility of it. I was a little bit concerned because if I remember correctly, they kind of described themselves as like a Latina, almost Cosmo. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I, you know, wasn't sure I wasn't a big fan of Cosmo. So I wasn't sure if it would appeal to me, but I subscribed, um, in the second year, um, uh, shortly after the first year was done, I, um, ended my membership, my subscription with them. And I wrote to them and I said, listen, I can't, I can't, um, follow this anymore. You have no black Latinas on your cover ever. I don't think they had a single one in the first year. Um, I don't know if any came later in the second year after I canceled my subscription, but that was really hard for me. Also, they were just featuring um, actresses. Right. So I was just kind of like, there's more than just actresses. There's more than, La there's just Latina actresses that you can feature, you know? Um, so that's what kind of pushed me away from them. I haven't, I've maybe looked at, I don't know, a, a handful of print copies since then. Um, very randomly, and I, I still don't find a great quality. I wasn't really impressed by how they were doing their translations. Oh my god! They yeah. would like print some stuff in English and then some stuff in Spanish, and then the Spanish was always like a weird um, part of what was done in English. So, like so in English, you got I think like a fuller, you know, fuller details, I guess. But then the Spanish was really short, or I, it didn't provide everything. So I was kind of thrown off about that a little bit. Um, Although initially I did like that they had the Spanish. Most recently, my biggest issue with Latina Magazine was that a couple of years ago, and this was their online kind of like digital thing that they were doing. Um, there was like uh, Afro Latin Week, and it was in Black History Month. And it was, I think like makeup tips or something like that. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Excuse my language. Um, you know, that really, really bothered me because um, I know that as Afro-Latinos, we need to make a space for ourselves, but I'm still torn between the why are Afro-Latinos only being celebrated on Black History Month and not during Hispanic Heritage Month. And I see that happening a lot. Yeah. I see Hispanic Heritage Month sort of being like for, for everyone. And then, oh, it's Black History Month. Well, let's talk about the Black Latinos right now since this is where they belong, right? So I'm, I'm always kind of thrown off. I also, um, I struggle with their Latino lists. I feel like there's so much reach. Like anybody who has like 116th, of a Latino 
great, great grand something yep. is Latina and we have to feature them in the magazine. And these are not necessarily people who identify as Latino, people who are concerned with Latino issues, people who speak out for Latino issues. So, so why are we grasping at them to be part of who we are? Right. So, so I don't, so I, so I've, I've kind of lost the sense of what, um, I've kind of lost the sense of what their, what their purpose is and what they're here to do. And I agree with you, Linda. I think they've just kind of become like e-entertainment, but with a, like a lot, little Latino spin on it. And that's, I, I don't value that. That's not. But you also feel that by them trying to do that reach, it's like they're trying to legitimize Latino experience as yep. opposed yep. to coming from a place of power. Yep. If they yep. freaking yep. the audience, they'd be oh, like, yeah. this is who we are. It's not yeah, about you yeah. getting to know us, it's about us telling you who we are. So that's a huge mm -hmm. difference. You know, I'm yep. trying to grab you. Can I don't to grab Beyonce? She's not, not Latina. Leave her alone. You know, speaking for another. So can I jump in here? I think was the other issue we were going to discuss. Mm hmm You know, so it's a somebody. Go ahead, because we can't. I can't see you. I don't know if they can. And see how do I sound? I can see Sophia. Can we not see? I can I see can't. Sophia, but you sound really far away. I'm gonna try plugging this into my. I don't. See I'm her. gonna give it a shot and hang her. Mm. I'm gonna try this. Okay. I love that. They just have so that. Oh, there you go. Can folks hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I love that people are sharing their stories as to the history with Latina Magazine because. I still have my inaugural issue in a nice plastic bag with Jennifer Lopez on the cover. Uh, <laughs> because like some of you said, I was really excited that there was finally a magazine geared towards, a lifestyle magazine that was geared to a beauty magazine, because that's what it is. And that's, right. and that, I think right. that plays a little bit to some of the content that we're seeing, right? It is a lifestyle magazine, which means it's gonna focus on beauty, it's gonna focus on fashion, right. it's gonna focus focus on celebrities. Um, it's not the, the lifestyle magazine, especially in a corporate media conglomerate, it's not going to be very political. Not that it can't be because you can look, you see all the really amazing things that Ebony is doing. It's not that it mm -hmm. can't be, but mm -hmm. that's not necessarily uh, the impulse of a media vehicle that is part of the big Hearst conglomerate. Right, or I don't know if it's for hers or by whatever, but one of those big media no, corporations. Isn't so, it owned by Black? But, but I'm Black very, Black. very. I can't hear you. Owned by a man? Was that the question? No, it's owned by a Black media company. Didn't Ebony buy it? Oh. It might. Latina? Right? Yeah. It might. Whereas Essence, is, Essence, is, Essence and Latina, I think, are from the same uh, media, Publishing. larger right. media publisher. Mm -hmm. But um, the ownership and the create and the creative part are two different things. The editorial, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah, but exactly. But I, I think exactly. So, so as I was saying, um, so I want to first. I want to so full disclosure, right? Lately, not too long ago, Latina Magazine put out like who will be our an aud casting call for who will be our next video star, and I did audition for that, and I did get call back, but I never thought I would get it, precisely because I didn't. I know that I am not the demographic and the folks were very nice to me. I had, they were very professional, was a very nice experience. Mm -hmm. But I really just kind of went after it just to be in action around certain things that I want in my life. It wasn't really because I really thought that I would get it. And there's a lot of reasons why I thought it's part, my primary thing was age was the reason why I wouldn't get it. Mm -hmm. um, but they were all very professional and they were all very, very nice. But dialing back, I have also been profiled a couple of times by Latina Magazine, most recently um, by Raquel Ricard, who is the politics editor, who's been doing women crush, women who crush the patriarchy. It's the only thing about the magazine that I consistently love. Um, and I like that, although, and that's the online edition. That's not in the print magazine, as far as I know. Um, and I that's anything by Raquel, I will click on and link, and she's making an effort to Yes. showcase Latina women that are doing really meaningful things. Um, and, and, and you know, she had a whole piece where she wrote why she uses the term Latinx. Like she, as a, not only is she really bringing in as a political editor, she's also very progressive. It's something that you don't see in a corporate realm. So I, I appreciate that Latina hired her, but I also know that that's not the norm. 
Um, but a bunch of years ago, when I first started publishing, uh, a writer who will remain nameless, <laughs> you know, profiled me and interviewed me. It was one of those little sidebar column things, you know, on the page where they were reviewing products and things like that. And the one thing that this person did that I did not care for, and I don't know if it was her, that's why I'm not naming her, because it could have been her editor who came in, yeah. that happens all the time too. The editor comes in and, and, and fucks your shit up and then your name has to live on it, right? I've had that happen to me. So she interviewed me by email. And then when the thing actually went to print, the questions were changed to make it look like there was some gotcha going on. Like when I read it, I didn't feel like, are you trying to support me or not? Like, you know, um, so like, like my book was, the book that I had written was about a character that was kind of like subconsciously committing suicide because she was making self-destructive decisions. She wasn't make, saying that she wanted to kill herself. But she was making really risky choices. Um, so the answer to my first question was about how I was trying to, you know, bring really progressive ideas into popular fiction through my Black Artemis novels. And then I explained what this character is. But, and then the question to that second question was changed suicide. That's not so revolutionary, but that wasn't the question I was answering. So it made me look like I was on the defensive, like I was put on the defensive on some really hardcore journalists asking me the tough questions. And meanwhile, mm. that wasn't how it went down. Mm. And that really did upset me. Um, the one time, the last time that I read something in the print magazine that I love was probably back in 95. And that was when Michelle Herrera Mulligan wrote an article about the missing women in Juarez. Mm. And she was writing that piece long before mm -hmm. everybody else was talking about it. But it was rare that you would see, and that was the last time I read anything in the print magazine that I really liked. And most people know Michelle Herrera Mulligan went on to become the chief of the now defunct mm -hmm. Cosmo Um, mm -hmm. You know, yeah. But at, but at the same time, he wrote the critique about Devious Me. Mm. And that pissed me off really bad because I felt for a magazine she shouldn't have been crapping on a on an actress who was a, making an attempt to creating a show that hadn't been seen right. yet. And she went all out on this, like she was very adamant about the whole main thing. Um, was so there an issue? To, was there like, issue <laughs> that she hadn't seen the show yet, or is it that you just disagreed with her opinion? Yes. That, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. If I say to you guys, listen, I got a badass mate. I know it's mate. You gotta wait. You're gonna still say to me, no, Linda, you're wrong. Blah blah blah. Oh. You know, you don't know what I'm gonna create. You have no idea what I can do now. If it sucks and it's exactly what we expected, that's a whole other shit. But we have to give each other the chance to create. And she shut it down early on. And I was very surprised, one, that it was her that did that. Two, that it was someone in such a high profile position. Because now you're saying Eva Longoria doesn't have a chance to do anything. You sort of, you are also influencing all the people that follow you. Mm -hmm. so, I don't know. Sometimes I think um, we need to be a little bit more open in certain positions. Mm -hmm. Especially when you're heading a magazine. Well, yeah, I agree with that. And to be on, and full disclosure, I was one of those people that, and actually, Linda, it was you that changed my mind about it. Not, I, I was, I'll be honest with you, I was actually right because it sucked. But <laughs> I was like, you know what? She's right. I haven't even seen it, and I'm going off strictly on the premise. And I was like, Linda's right. Let me give it a, ch you know, let me give it a chance. I watched a couple of episodes. I wanted to shoot my eyeballs out. I was like, no. <laughs> You should at least watch. But, <laughs> but that's, the, that's, that's the thing that I think, you know, we, th that we're struggling with, right? Is that when we see something and all we see is a trailer or all we read is a synopsis, right, right away, right. we are making judgments and criticisms about what the thing is going to be, what it's supposed to be, who it's supposed to represent, right. la di da right. and we haven't seen the full sort of story, right? And, and you know... And we're doing that to ourselves. Like it wasn't even yes. like, you know, like any other journalists or anyone else out there had come down so hard 
on anything the way that people came down hard on Devious Maids, or the way that Latinos, rather, came down hard on Devious Maids. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, and I don't want to move the conversation too far away from what, you know, what we're talking about, which is Latina Magazine, but, um, you know, I think that the, the thing that I, that I wanted to remark upon is what Maria was saying earlier, and I think this kind of goes, sort of connects, which is that, you know, how are we dealing with the feedback, right? They're getting, they're, they get feedback from people, whether today, you know, and in today's age, somebody writes a tweet to you, you know, but I'm sure that there were numbers of people who wrote letters to them, who sent emails to them, who tried to plead with them for the type of content that they were looking for. And I think that they, that, you know, they have just continued to go their own way. And I guess they have a readership. So what does that say about us? But you know what? Um, you know that that people are you know continue to read the magazine and support the magazine um you know women our age who you know i mean i i don't know i i thought that those numbers were really really interesting considering that you know what kind of content that they're putting out and who they're saying their readership is which is an older well, group they mm -hmm. ask a really good question but do they care now we happen mm -hmm. to know that um, when they made Beyonce uh, honorary Latina, which is funny because that article number one was actually a year mm -hmm. old, and mm -hmm. the, which was already which is already kind of a little dishonest, right? You did that mm -hmm. a year ago, mm -hmm. and but then it's because of the but because of the popularity of Lemonade, you reissue it, and then people start to give you feedback like this is not cool and it's latinos and african americans alike telling you it's not mm -hmm. cool to, to if you wanted to write a piece about how but beyonce um resonates with latinas that's fair game right you know but right. to say that she's an honorary latina and erase right. what she, who she really is and you're getting mm -hmm. feedback like that and word is because you know we are in media so um we do hear things from credible people um mm -hmm. that their attitude was like they were like they didn't give a shit. All they care, because Vibe wrote a piece about how it was problematic, and they were like, thank you, Vibe, more clicks. So it was basically wow. like a big fuck you to the critique. But you know what? And I just think, and without naming the answer, what if I feel like the audience, be ready to be honest and let the audience know that, 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 that we heard that, the, you know, that they were like, fuck you to the critique, because they didn't care, because they got clicks. But mm -hmm. isn't that mm -hmm. really kind of just... A, 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 of a huge lack of professionalism, even like savviness in the space they operate in. First of all, if, if Beyonce's lemonade is the, you know, the, the topic of the day, bring out some new shit. Why are you retreading something from a year ago? Do you not have a staff that can write something? You know? And then also after that, it's like, what, what are you doing kind of sounding so vocal? Like, oh, thank you for the clip. That's not a, that's not a thing. And it doesn't even go with the demographic. 36 year old aren't talking to that's not how we respond. And there was a piece, well, and there was a, I just want to put this out there, and, then you can, and there was a piece that somebody had written about the Puerto Rican debt crisis that was really ignorant and fucking offensive to me as a Puerto Rican. Holy shit. You know, I haven't seen it. Yeah. Um, I, I, I just wanted and you know, I'll try and go find it later. I don't want to get cut off, but I just want to put that out there. I just, so, yeah, yeah. Even in their own house, there is like an, an insensitivity even among the various Latino cultures. Mm -hmm. Can I, can I can it was very problematic and ignorant. And, and, you know, it was a very mm -hmm. anti PR thing. Well, oh, your sister, so what the fuck are y'all complaining about? It was really ahistorical and really problematic. And then, and, and when I read shit like that, I'm like, you know what? Stay in your lane, stick to being a lifestyle magazine, talk about celebrities and fashion and makeup, and leave the politics alone. But then a Raquel Ricard comes along, and I'm like, yeah, that's what we want. That's what I want to see. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just being honest about the conflicted feelings about when they do handle yeah. politics. Yeah. You know what, Maria, were you going to say? Yeah, you know, this is, and this is also um, goes back a while back from its inception. Because we're in media, we hear a lot of the behind the scenes stuff that goes on. Um, and from early on, even when it was Christy Talberger, I think I'm saying her name right, um, there was a big kind of like, it's Mexicans, you know, we're, we're Mexican, it's the Mexican mafia and not so much. Uh, and I think she said that no Puerto Rican would ever be at the helm of, of Latina, which, yeah, 
that's and I heard from that from somebody who also who was Puerto Rican and wound up actually quitting because of that. So there's been this sort of like weird regionalistic, we don't know what we're doing, but we understand Latina is a big buying power. So let's just throw something at the public and see the sticks kind of mentality. And honestly, it's trickled down since then. And you know what? They're owned by Essence, who does it. I mean, I don't really read Essence, so I don't know how good a job it does or it doesn't. But it's not, it's not, they're not even looking around and learning from the people that are in the same space as them. Other oh, magazines, right? Know, with the function. How is it they, and this right. goes to like, and I hate to say it, and I always sound like I'm bashing our people, but how is it we're always like three steps behind? You know, we're like a doofus in the class. It's like, oh, you know, what the popular kids are doing. So, like, it's really like because, of because of money. Because of money. <laughs> Because I remember very clearly when I started doing the Yo Soy Latina play at the New York mm -hmm. they would be in the audience. Oh. A lot of the people from the magazine would come to the audience because it was the first time, besides the Dirty Girls Social Club book, that you had heard of a group of very diverse women being in one room. Mm -hmm. Then they went, wow. This is like groundbreaking, you know? It's like a bunch of us could be in the same room together and be different colors. This is why I have very little respect for the person who founded Latina Magazine, because if you could not come up with that concept on your own, because every magazine cover was a white Latina, and I met her, and I know her vibe, and it was off. And if she didn't want to be, she didn't want to include other people. Yeah. other people yeah. yeah um other cultures and you're probably and exactly what you were just saying but um they copy trends so if something is trendy and if something is evolving then they go okay the people want it let's move i just think that's how it is overall i love people who are groundbreaking and taking mm -hmm. the chances and show us something and 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 and, and who's sort of like you know the, we're gonna get to it but almost like what, what beyonce did with lemonade mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she sort of you know, did something extraordinary, and I think people are gonna copy her now. Um, anyway, that's what I think about that. I just want to share a couple of things that, that Viv is uh, sharing that I think are sharing. That I think so she earlier she wrote that um, that the magazine may be struggling, and that's why they're releasing or re-releasing some of these pieces. She says it sounds like they're being run by privileged white men, which I think is really interesting because it, you know. Something can be run by Latinos, but if their mission is the same as that privileged white male mission, right? Like their mission, you know, then what then what are they really doing? Right. And so they're they're not the, the magazine is not for us. The magazine is what they think is gonna sell or what they think right. is going to appease a particular group or get validation from a particular group. Um which is why I think they benefit from those Beyonce is an honorary Latina. Right. Oh, look at this, you know, famous star who lives and breathes as a white person. She's really Latina, right? That's not about bringing them into our culture. That's about bringing us closer to them in their, I think, in their whiteness <laughs> to, to say that like, you know, oh, they, you know, we're this too, and we're that too. And I, you know, it, it, it really is problematic. Um, Viv also says, uh, that she liked Essence Magazine and what they were doing, um, uh, releasing, artic releasing articles to magazines she looked like women occupied throughout the years. Um, we have evolved, women have shit to say, yo. Uh, <laughs> we're no longer just housewives. And that actually it, it is really great because that goes into a little bit of um, some of my critique of JLo when we get there. It's sort of like, you know, oh my God, can we get there? being out of touch, <laughs> right? With what's really happening. And I think Latina's out of touch. Um, you know, so I completely agree with that. And I think JLo is, is really, really out of touch. Yeah. So, yeah. Before oh, we, oh, can I just say one thing? Are we saying that Latina magazine is no longer relevant? Oh, and what we do about it? Can Latina magazine become we, relevant? Can I mean, we just say one thing for before reason. we finish? I'm talking over you, sorry. Yeah, I was just asking um, a question. What are we saying? Is that Can Latina Magazine, it's clear that we, at least the four of us, don't feel that it's relevant. Can it ever become, it, can it be, then again, what's it going to take? Because here's what I want to throw out here. Because we have spoken to the fact that there is a large, larger media corporation here. Right. And <laughs> chances are that media corporation is not owned by Latina women. Um, 
So that's problem number one. And what I want to throw out there is that somebody's clicking on this shit. Someone likes this shit. 35 so, old college educated so women I don't know. are clicking on it, apparently. I don't know, <laughs> like, <I> don't know <laughs> if there's enough of these people to make them money if, if, if the people who don't like, if the Latinos who don't like it like us um, are enough yes. to take care of them that if they started to produce more content that we could appreciate, we could sustain yeah, them okay. financially. Or if there's enough Latinos who love the Kim Kardashian, you, you know, Demi Lovato, Selena Gomez pieces, honorary Latina pieces to keep them in business. And that's because it does enough for them to keep them in business. And the answer is they're going to just keep creating stuff for them. And we need to go find or create something else for us. And why? And there shouldn't be just one Latina well, lifestyle, mainstream magazine. That's why I'm disappointed, whatever, that's why I'm disappointed that Cosmo for Latina um, folded because there should be more than one vehicle in that space. We shouldn't have just one magazine right. trying to do everything for us. Are you, that's true. Yeah. Do we know, do we know what happened to Cosmo Latina or that's, <laughs> that, I guess that was sort of their competitor for a while, right? They're sort of like, if you weren't doing eating, the same thing. yeah. Um, I mean, and, and this this kind of goes back to sort of what we've been talking about offline a lot, um, you know, which is that we only ever seem to have like the one thing that's the thing, right? So right now we only have Latina Magazine or we only have JLo at that level or we only have the one, you know, and there's no um, alternative right now that we are finding that we can say, all right, you know what? You're not into Latina Magazine content. Well, here's this other brilliant thing that's that's out there. And I mean, I don't know, some of these, some of the Latino like online publications, I, you know, they're hit or miss for me. Sometimes they're, they put out some interesting things and sometimes they don't. And sometimes I, I think a lot of what they're putting out is just recycling of stuff that's already out there, you know, more like sharing it versus like contributing legit original you content. Have, you have really original pieces and it doesn't even I, I don't even know if it's because they just don't know how to hire the correct people. I mean people right. like Raquel who are doing great pieces, but it's almost like they don't know how to complement that and build the publication around those voices. Mm -hmm. Well can I throw something out here as just 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 to be fair, just to complicate this whole thing, because I don't think I think that's the nature of the current online media space. Latinos are not the only one who are doing that. So just to be fair right, to right, them, right. everybody else is yeah. repurposing material. Right, so, right, right. But the thing right. is for us, because we don't have that history of innovating, then it's particularly harmful to us to be, because at least other communities and other entities have a range of material to repurpose. Some of it is shit and some of it is really substantive. But how much of the mm -hmm. substance is up that we, we made we, we have to originate more substantive stuff so that we can really purpose it. So right. that's, that's well, what, what I want to throw out there, to be fair. Can I dare to say that blogging has messed that up for people? Because blogging, people are putting out these think pieces, and some of them are really great and interesting, but they're not hired writers. So what some of these other online journals are doing, I don't even know if they're paying these people, but they'll reshare the blog, right? right? But they're not necessarily a contributing writer to that online publication. Right. So I wonder if blogging has sort of hurt the ability for writers to get their voices actually in print as a hired freelance or staff writer, you know, at a publication. I'm curious about that. I, it just popped into my head. I haven't even really you know, thought about it that deeply. But when you blog, you put it all out there for free, you know? Um, and so you're not, you know, and, and so these other magazines can like, say, oh, we want to share your work through our publication. And, you but, know, well, they're we, still, you're not necessarily a writer for them. But that goes into the who's at the head, because all of the, because right. everybody, you're right, everybody is aggregating other news sources, but it comes down to curating. And that's where the curator has to be able to say, they have to have good taste and they have to be intelligent and they have to know their space and they have to know their audience. And they have to be able to say, out of all of the junk, all the voices that are there, these are the pearls. And we don't have people, unfortunately, that know how to pick the pearls. And we don't have all that many people that are creating the pearls. So we have a huge deficit across the board 
that gets reflected. And then unfortunately, we have one entity, this one magazine that speaks for all of us. And who's at the mm -hmm. Honestly, who is at the loss? Because they're curating mm -hmm. poorly, they're creating poorly, and then they do have these one or two great voices, like you said, Raquel's, and she's get she gets no support, and she's like this one lone voice, you know, amidst the junk. Like, you know, mm -hmm. stop putting the gold statue in a junkyard, for favor. Yeah. <laughs> I have to, it's interesting that you say that because I have to read a comment by Aide Morales, yes. who said, I sat in a room this week and there were almost 100 women interested in dress and makeup. In a panel of activists and women warriors, the dress presentation got the most questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so, but then again, I, I, like we would have to know like who was sponsoring that event, and you know, so right. that, that that that's so that's a more complicated question. But I have to say that what I did speaks to is something that I have seen plenty of times before, where um, in certain it's that certain certain spaces it gets it gets difficult. For Latinos who want to push the substantive things to do so. And this is not to say that um, you can't have conversations and fun about fashion and makeup or whatever. But again, using lemonade as an example, people yeah. have been having those discussions about lemonade as too, right? About the substance mm -hmm. that's there, but also about the fashion, also about the music. Mm -hmm. And so it's not like they're mutually exclusive. We can discuss all of it. Mm -hmm. It just seems to be that as a community, we are lagging in behind and how we want to use our media opportunities. You know, we tend to play it safe. Yeah. We tend to play it safe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, the stakes are really high and yet we tend to play it safe. Yeah. Um, Haiti just shared that it was the 100 Latina Women Mind, Body and Spirit Conference. They do it, I believe, once or twice a year. I've I've been to one many many years ago when they first started it, and um and I and I remember that it was happening happening this week because a few people were posting about it on Facebook. Um, she says she says it was wonderful, but that moment left her fria. Yeah, I, I, I probably a lot of us would have would have felt similar. Um, you know, especially in the opportunity to to engage with with people who are doing other things for the community. We all want to look good when we're doing our activist work, but, um, <laughs> you know, we sort of have to think about, I think, especially when we're in those kinds of spaces with so many people together, you know, what is it that we want? And, and, and the reality is, is that regardless, Latina Magazine still seems to have a, le a readership. So somebody is reading that junk. Somebody enjoys it. I mean, we, we, I know we establish, who, we don't, well, let me put it in but I, somebody, let me give you an analogy. people do, right? <laughs> so, Linda, okay. say what you were going to say, and then I want to put out an analogy. So, Linda, say what yeah. you were going to say, and then I want to put out an analogy that um, I learned that really, I think it would resonate with people to explain what that's about. But, Linda, you were saying something. I want you to say that first. I, I think I was going to say it about five minutes ago. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. If it comes don't back, worry. let me know. So, the way it was put to me, was that if you give a thirsty person a dirty glass of water, they're gonna drink, oh, yeah. drink it. If you give yeah. that, if you give them a choice between a, a dirty glass and a full glass uh, and a clean glass, most people are gonna offer the clean glass. There are always gonna be people, even when they have the choice of a clean glass over a dirty glass of water, who will still take the dirty glass of water because of where you know their internalized oppression but i think for the most part there aren't that many clean glasses of water for the latino community right. in the media mm -hmm. space. i i think too that when they you know i'm the first person that comes to mind is uh is her name evelyn lazada the one with the show on uh, the basketball mm -hmm. yes she was on the yeah. car she was on the cover of Latina magazine. Ooh. That makes no sense to me. She was on Basketball Wives. She was a Where violent woman. That is. She married um, the basketball player that apparently headbutted that, her. Oh my God. Oh God. Is she, it was a football Evelyn player. Was battered, was a, oh, okay. Okay. There's some folks who are then sharing. She was, right. Then oh. she left him and Oprah decided to give her an opportunity to, for a reality show to tell her story. First, she was with a, a young, there it goes, Chatter. Okay. <clears throat> and 
And um, what I don't understand is why, what are the um, criteria for your cover girls? So you have someone like Gina Rodriguez who won the Golden <clears throat> Globe. Very understandable. I can accept that. Then you have this reality TV star who has accomplished pretty much nothing. I mean, it sounds harsh. I know she's a reality TV person and she's trying to get her life together, but how many thousands of women aren't trying to get their lives together in the same way? Well, here's the thing. And and, uh, Haiti is mentioning that um, she's a survivor of domestic violence, which is true. But here's what I would question. Did Latina Magazine use that opportunity of having her on the cover to do a larger work around domestic violence, either in the Latino community or in the general community? Um, that's what I would be curious about. I didn't see it. I didn't, I didn't read that, that. Well, I wouldn't have read the, that particular um, volume or edition. But, you know, but that, that's sort of the place where we, we tend to question Latina, right? So she's on the cover. Is she on the cover because she's a reality TV star? Or is she on the cover because she's a survivor and they're using that She's on the cover. I, I, I honestly, I disagree with you guys on this. I feel like... I don't know. I, I mean, I don't have an opinion. So given, I, that it's, given that it's a lifestyle magazine, it makes mm-hmm. perfect sense that Evelyn Lozada was on the cover of Latina magazine because it's not... You know, it, 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 I would have... like. I do hear what you're saying and agree with you that would I would have liked... I don't know what the timing of her cover was. It would have been <laughs> wonderful if the timing of her cover would have been about her being a survivor. I don't know That's when I don't know when she was on the cover. But even if she wasn't a survivor, even if she was on basketball wise, as as, as problematic as basketball wives is, and now she's on own, which has a certain it has a certain pedigree because it's an because it's Oprah's network. I just feel like it's a lifestyle magazine. If you're a celebrity and you pass a certain level of visibility, you're you're fair game for the cover. That's just how I feel, you know, about mm-hmm. that in particular. I know there, I think, not to say that there aren't better people, and not to say that there aren't better people, but I wouldn't have ruled her out because she was a reality TV star. Because a lifestyle magazine, you're trying to get, you're trying to sell, move copies. You want the people who are who are visible and popular and, and that's not it or not she was but that's not well, that's not the whole that should not be the whole criteria for cover girls if if she came out as an activist usually the cover has something to do with an article inside of it right linda i think that's what you're trying to say Thank you. mm-hmm. yeah. so that's what i'm talking about like the mindset of the people at the top of the magazine who are your curators who's your editorial board who is saying yes she right now evelyn is hot and she's clicky and it's going to get us a lot of hits that's the only reason. Exactly. But who's tying it into the larger issue? Who's tying it into the larger issue? Who's creating a narrative around that cover? Yeah. Yeah. We would. I don't know. I, I see what you, I see what you're saying, <clears throat> Sophia. Totally understand that. And um, but again, I'm not saying it's just, right. I'm just saying it's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. I, I, I hate trendy but, shit that just gets on. Well, they have had, I mean, I remember reading an article in the magazine when it first, first, maybe in its first year, that was about um, a Latina mom who stayed with a violent father throughout her children's upbringing. And then after her children were adults, she then separated from the father. And so the whole article was really about... um, her struggle and and making the decision to leave and why she you know waited for her kids to to grow up and that's a real thing right that's a real thing there are lots of women who sort of suffer in that silence while their children are growing up for whatever their beliefs are and that varies that was a really touching article to me because it it's a it's something that we don't talk about right we are always talking about how women who stay in domestic violence rate relationships are weak and why don't they get out and la di da and here this one article shared a sort of a perspective that was unique that we hadn't seen before um so you know where is that i i don't see a lot of that kind of content coming out of at least the few things that i've seen and i'm not talking anymore about the print because I haven't really seen the print, but they can certainly share links to the digital, you know, article version of the of what's in the magazine. Um, we're just not seeing that kind of content, and I think the the Evelyn Losada mm-hmm. example sort of highlights that. You know, here you had an opportunity um, 
with someone who is a survivor and I guess, and has, you know, <clears throat> turned her, you know, not turned her life around. I don't want to say that, but has, has made some strides in her life and it's, you know, maybe doing something more. I don't know what her own show is about. Um, with the help you know, of more reality TV. Yeah. Okay. Well, it just seemed like it might have been. And, and thank you. And I just want to thank Katie because I, I really wasn't, I don't even know who, I feel like I know much more about Evelyn Losada right now than I ever did. Um, We're going to vote. You know, so thank you guys for sharing all of the details. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, but it, but yeah, but I, I think, I think, I think ultimately, maybe it's my, my sort of like finalish word on, on the Latina magazine thing is that it, it's, I find that it's really empty and it's leaving me not feeling like it's a publication that I want to engage with or one that I think represents me. And it's because of all those little holes. It's because, you know, when you put someone like Evelyn Losada on that we even have to question, is this about her popularity right. in reality TV stardom? Or right. do we know confidently that, you know, um, you know, she has had this experience and she's here to share it and help other people learn how to survive and move on and, and you know, have a full life after that kind of experience. Um, and and I think it could do both, you know, I mean, I think it could, you know, obviously this, this reality TV popularity that people have is a vehicle for them, right? It, 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 it's the still just some kind of vehicle, you so know, she but, that she was on the she cover. Have her I know. She in the magazine, but she didn't have to be in the cover. But even if she was on the cover, why couldn't Latina create a narrative, just like Haiti said, not everybody has the I privilege did. of academia. <laughs> the, all they have to it's, say is, I, you know, uh, uh, domestic uh, abuse, what do you call it, a, a, a survivor tale from Evelyn Lozada, you know, from somebody, from somebody who, some, I don't know, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm like, I, this didn't come out right, but essentially saying what Haiti is, kind of like spinning it, all right, not everybody has access to therapists, this is a woman who didn't have academia, who, who did it from the ground up, and look what she managed to do, this is the story we're bringing to you. You craft mm -hmm. narrative around it. So that, it, but also, People are not seeing the other side of the story. She married a rich basketball player. She mm -hmm. goes after rich athletes. Mm. And she's given the opportunity for a reality show based on her relationship with these athletes. That's not right. That's not your average Latina going through something. Mm. It's so interesting. I, I, being on the cover is a problem for me. In the magazine is not a problem. <laughs> Being on the cover, I think you deserve to do a hell of a lot more to be on a cover of the I agree. I agree. I, 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 that's a great conversation. I had recommended to uh, my Latina chat media co host that we actually do an episode about Evelyn Osada. Specifically talking about her evolution on television because she went from she went from VH1 basketball wise to own living in Lozada and 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 and, and uh, the uh, the the bridge between the two was Ilyana Ilyana's fix my life and it was all around her issues of um, what has led led her to enter in a relationship where she and marry a man that she barely knew who was abusive and, and for her and she talked a lot more about her background like her father not being there and being a <clears throat> mom so i think we definitely need to look at her a little bit more closely and continue this conversation yeah. um i think so i just want to i want to wrap up wrap up and just so i would let can latina magazine be made what just real quick wrap up can latina magazine be made relevant again? If so, what does it need to do? One thing that I'm hearing from all of you is that they need to be a little bit more judicious about who's on their cover. Um, that's one thing that I'm hearing. Can, can I can your magazine be more relevant? I think they need, to, honestly, I think they need to start hiring the cream of the crop. Stop making mm -hmm. lazy hiring decisions and you have to be smarter. And I, you know, sometimes I feel like an asshole. I feel like the, the one asshole in the little four squares who's like, you're idiots. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to own that. Really, you got to be smarter about it. There's a, there's a plethora of intel intelligent Latina writers, quite a few of them right here in these four squares. Like, And it's not even like that. It's not even here. here. With the internet right now, you can be a curator. You can find those pearls. But you got to want to. 
and you have to be smart enough to recognize the pearls for what they are. So honestly, can it be relevant? Sure, absolutely it's relevant. But you need smart people that know how to how to make that happen. And I think it starts with hiring from the top down. And that's my two. Mm -hmm. lust, I want to give her some credit because she did say that. Who? Uh, she, poem lust. She mm -hmm. Yes. Um, she did say they should start looking for bloggers to become contributing writers. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think that's the smart way to go. I don't know why they're not doing that, but I want to talk about J Lo. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, let's do this. <laughs> oh, can I show something about J Lo when we get there? Sorry. What happened? We said J Lo, and everybody went. Frozen. Um, no, no, no. I just wanted to share something really quickly because um, Rebecca Hitana uh, posted to my uh, Instagram and, you know, because she's not on the chat with her, but she shared something that, you know, that's interesting, that's relevant to the conversation. I just wanted to share that. So is that cool if I just share her little blip? What blip? What well, flip? Tell me. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. So she said. So Rebecca says, "I just saw Ancha Mama, and even though it's kind of corny, the video, the message did resonate, and I was saying, hell yeah." Um, as much of a media person slash entrepreneur I've been over the last five years, I was also a big time housewife and mama. Not, not no more. So because I think <laughs> I think that Let's we. We're we're coming. Oh, we we have all these ideas, and, you know, that, that we're going to be sharing in a couple of minutes. But um, oh, hers was a little bit different hearing. from what I think. What and I just got kicked off. What we've been got talking got about to get back on. Maria's calling in again, and everybody froze for me. Uh, so what, I'm sorry, I, and I got kicked off. We're we're talking about J Lo now, right? We are talking about um, J Lo. Sophia, can you hear uh, us? Okay. Yeah. Okay, I see it. Like, so I see it everybody except for Maria. Mm -hmm. I say we dive in. Um, I, yeah, I, yeah. I'll start us off. Um, so I, I'm trying really hard to find one or two nice things to say that are not patronizing oh. and that are honest before I go in because I have a lot of problems. So why would um, you answer one question with the video then, more than the Just to start it um, off, is it a feminist message? Okay. No. Great. It's not. It's second wave feminist message, which for me is incredibly outdated. So it's a feminist message, yes but it's an extremely outdated feminist message. It is um, for people who, I just feel like it's, it's, it's second wave feminism um, and we're already on like the fourth wave. So, so, and that was one of the like, my attempts to say one positive thing about this is that, cause I don't want to discourage Jennifer Lopez from moving in this direction but I want her to move in this direction because it's sincere. I don't want her to move into this direction because it's the hot thing to do right now. I want the feminism to be genuine and maybe it is genuine because this is where she honestly is with her feminism, which is second wave. It's not third wave, it's not millennial, it's not fourth wave. Um, had I been 12, 13 years old, this song might have spoken to me. This video might have spoken to me. Um, I think artistically, the video is ambitious for her. Um, but I have a lot of problems with some of the things she's doing. And the, the song artistically, yeah. um, I think it's a step back for her, sonically speaking. I don't think, I think she has done, even though she's, she's all about pop music, this just is not, yeah. I, I know Megan Trainor wrote the song. I also looked it up. This song has six writers, five of who are men, one who's Megan Trainor. And I feel like Megan Trainor didn't give her, is not giving her her best for J-Lo's well, album. Megan Trainor saving her best songs for her own album. So I'm gonna say that for now. I'll jump in later when we talk about yeah, the video. Yeah, honestly, look, a lot uh, of first of all, video. Megan Trainer supposedly ta I had an, I had um and I have a link that I'm going to put in because she was defending J Lo against the backlash. She texted the she texted the I guess the Everything lyrics back. to J Lo. J Lo said she loved it. So I don't know that it's Trainer. I don't know what prompted her to write it. If she, 
I can hear you. Can you hear I me, Linda? I can hear anyone. Can y'all yes. hear me? Okay. Can you hear me, Sophia? Okay. Okay. Great. So, Linda, why don't you dive in? Maria, since, you're you the one that I can see. Okay, I see you. Yeah, Maria, I was. But I don't um, hear I'm talking about Megan Trainer and and the fact that she actually wrote the article. I mean, wrote the song and texted it to JLo, and JLo was like, "I love it." So I don't even know if it was born. Okay. Maria, Linda, talking. why don't you jump? I'm talking. I'm talking. She's talking. Maria's but I can't talking. Hear her. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 But you can't. Can you hear her? Linda, can you hear her? Oh, I can. Okay. <laughs> so, um, okay, a few so, things because the way I, I analyze lemonade is the way I want to analyze this, um, because anybody can have a message, but I feel it is in the execution that the, the, the you will find the brilliance. And I, there's no brilliance for me here. And Lenina Nadell said it perfectly in her piece, um, and I and I copied it here and I shared it, is that she uses these cinematic moments um, to 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 sort of uh, create this whole idea of, of feminism. You know, she uses these moments like Norma Ray. She uses. Um, uh what's the one uh melanie griffith was in it the 80s movie oh working, girl. working girl working girl blah 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 okay none of that works because for me when i watch the piece she begins in a telephone booth call she's talking to her man and she's saying i'm not gonna do this anymore i think the tone that it started with that that very serious tone was the wrong tone to use for a song that became this ain't your mama she should have right. been like, no, what do you, what do you know? She should have been a little bit more sassier, okay? Then she goes into this whole, uh, we see the first brand on her sleeve. The camera focuses on the brands of her jacket. Oh my God, I thought I was gonna lose my mind. So now it doesn't become about the message, it's becoming about the endorsement right out of the box. Mm -hmm. Not even a minute in, we're being introduced to this brand. And this is where we go with this for the right. whole length. It's about six or seven endorsements in this video, which I didn't think had any place. Then she uses a Hillary Clinton um, piece about talking about empowerment. But then she takes us back to the 50s. See, the way I feel, she, she had to be the center of attention in this whole thing. She had to be the center person. And she could have easily shown other women in those positions and be the leader of that, mm -hmm. that movement. So that it would make more sense when she, at the end, celebrates with the other women in the way that Beyonce sort of showed her, all her women, but she was sort of the messenger. Yeah. I would have liked to have seen J-Lo for a second really think about it because it became a cutesy, this is why it's not feminist to me. Right. Or good feminism. Is that it's just a really tacky, easy way to say, you know, let's stand up for our rights, but let's still look pretty. Yeah. She's talking about, I, I'm not going to clean your this. I'm, she's on the floor cleaning the floor. She's ironing. Yes. The, the, the character is ironing. Creatively, J-Lo throws me for a loop. I can go on and on and on, so you got to shut me up. Well, he's, he's not. He's playing it. I could go on and on and too, but I'm going to give Siri a chance to talk to her since I started us off. Hi. Sorry. Hi, I got Welcome it. back. I, I went into the twilight zone for a few minutes. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, the, the, the video and the song are incredibly difficult to digest. Um, especially, you know, and I don't know if this was mentioned already, but in the wake of something like Lemonade, um, um, to have this kind of follow up right after sort of goes to a little bit of what I think Maria was saying earlier that we're always like three steps behind. This was like 10 steps behind. Um, uh, now, here's the thing. I am learning to, to like and, and, and um, be appreciative of J-Lo and who she is, what she sort of represents. Um, this is, it's taken me a very long time to get here. But then she does something like this, and I'm like, girlfriend, WTF. Mm -hmm. So um, 
I have huge issues with it. Uh, I I noticed the branding, but that wasn't my first issue with it. My first issue with it is why are we calling this a feminist piece in 2016? She did. She did. When, no, I know she did. I know, no, no, I know. Um, when when she actually the does. issues that she's presenting are the issues of um, the feminist mystique of the middle class white female. That's you know, right. homemaker. That's those Where are her is. issues. And actually, at that time, Black and Latina feminists were 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 in conflict with that because the you know that sort of white brand of feminism was not representative of all women. So you've chosen to call to to the struggles that you've chosen to represent in this video um, really only speak to um, at least with the images that you depicted rather. With right. the images you're supposed to depict, you really only speak to this sort of like white, um, you know, female, white feminist issue of the 1950s. Um, she discussed no issues of today. Okay. There, there's so many things going on today for women, you know, to, to, to keep it, you know, about cooking dinner for somebody. And, and not to say that those aren't feminist issues, but. I just felt like if you if you really want a feminist anthem and you're doing it in 2016, then you should talk about some of the things that women are experiencing today, or have some of your images reflect the struggles that women are experiencing today. Right. Exactly. You know what that I'm saying? Been... We're talking about honor violence. We're talking about say her name. We're talking about um, you know child marriages, and you know you're like I'm not gonna cook you no food. Of course you're gonna cook goddamn food. It's your family. You're feeding them. Like you know it. I'm confused about um, you know. I mean I think in her mind, in J Lo's <laughs> mind, she felt you know she thought she she really believed in this, and I know because she loves her own music a lot. Um, but it, no, it's true. It's true. Um, you know, so I think she was really feeling it and she thought she was doing great, but she's at the, like the, what was it? I think somebody, when somebody who was critiquing, um, Bell Hooks's piece on Lemonade, they wrote about feminism. It's sort of like somebody's pre-K feminism, somebody's like PhD right. feminism or whatever. Yeah, so like, they know right now is that pre-K feminism. <laughs> Okay, and that's really what it is, and it and it's a little bit disappointing. Um, I was very kind of surprised. I wasn't surprised that someone else wrote the lyrics. I was surprised that Megan Trainer wrote the lyrics, and then other things. I was like, oh, okay. But it could have been I have a thing with millennials right now, and I love you if you're a millennial, but I, you know, I, I'm still trying to get the millennials. So I'm like, she's 22. She's white. What, you know, like what 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 experience is she lending to this little pop song? And how is how is that going to translate to J Lo? You know, coming, and I think coming from a twenty-two year old Megan Trainor, is that how old she is? Megan Trainor. Well, that's what it said yeah. in the that's what it said in okay. the article. I can accept that message from a twenty-two year old, old, yeah. old woman. I cannot Absolutely. accept it except from J Lo, right? Who's forty-five or forty-six? Who's been married yes. several times and exactly is in a position right. of power? Exactly right. Act like you have some. Someone else wrote this, and I'm so sorry. I I can't remember who it was. Um, and I think this is around the time, Linda, that you were talking about how she featured herself in all the little vignettes. Right. Um, I think someone else had written like, uh, you know, something about that as well. Like, how could she have featured more Latinas or more diverse women around? Oh, God, I think that would have been incredible. I, 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 I think, build on that point. Yeah, about, yeah. Uh, about JLo, not, I've always said that one of my issues with JLo is that she doesn't showcase an impulse to sisterhood. No. Right. She doesn't share the space with anyone. And, you know, she cares about other girls and women to the extent that they are her fan base and appealing to them makes her money. But other than that, I don't really see a lot of impulse for sisterhood. And one thing that really, that, that, and this needs to be said, right? Mm -hmm. I, I tried to give a little bit of like, well, it's feminist if it's, if it's second wave, it's, this is where she genuinely is. But this just really feels like jumping on a bandwagon to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't feel sincere right and, no, and the first thing that makes me feel that way is that one of the producers of this song is dr luke who is a very controversial figure because yep. he has been accused yeah. of sexually abusing yeah. and emotionally abusing kesha so, so can i can i just all the people 
She is Jennifer Lopez. There's a lot of people who want to produce for her. There's a lot of people who want to write songs for her. There's a lot of people who want to collaborate with her. She did not need to get in bed figuratively. She with didn't. This man who she has. She didn't. She didn't. She didn't. Megan Trainer. The article that I read this morning about Megan Trainer. Actually, Megan Trainer came out on her behalf and stated that. When Megan Trainer originally wrote and had the song produced, it was done with Dr. Luke. That J Lo actually had zero to do with Dr. Luke. But the they point is, she chose the song, and see, this is why they didn't work together. Now, that. does she have a responsibility to know I, who produced she it? Have a responsibility. Sure, I feel but I just want to make sure that that's clear. She is not a brand new recording artist who has absolutely no control over her career. So she right. needs to be responsible and know about these decisions that are being made. Uh, See, this is how I, this is what gets me about where she evolves and where she doesn't. Because the argument that, well, it was somebody else's doing is the same argument that was made when she was taken to task for using the N-word in one of her songs. Then it was, Ja Rule wrote the song. So, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, like, and I, and let me just say, I, when she was criticized for using the N-word, I actually defended her, not because I felt she has a right to use the word, because I don't, but because of the way she was being attacked, because mm -hmm, Star was mm -hmm, on the radio mm -hmm. station. Yeah, they put, they put it through the ringer, yes. A spick and calling her a rice and bean eating princess. And for, and I was like, when Fat Joe and Big Pun were using these words, nobody cares. A problem. But now a woman is coming and using this term, and you've got an issue. That's different than saying, mm -hmm. okay, but, but when J Lo was asked about it, her response was, it, it's hurtful to me that you would make me a racist. She did not take responsibility and tackle it on. So for me personally, I yeah. thought she needed, that's no excuse because it was because it was such, she may not have chosen him to create the song, but she still had a chance to say, I am not going to release this song. Megan Trainor is writing other songs for me. Given that this guy is one of the producers, I cannot put this song on my album given what he's been accused by another woman artist of doing to her. She, I, I, I'm not going to let her slide for that. And then the other yeah. thing is, um, she never collaborates with women of color. So, she doesn't, so now that she has a couple of women marching in a video with her, but where's the collaboration? She's got Rihanna's boots on in her video, but the only, she collaborates with black men, she collaborates with Latino men, and she collaborates now that she's starting to collaborate, it's always with white women. Why isn't she collaborating with Rihanna? Why isn't she collaborating with Nicki Minaj? Why does it have to be Iggy Azalea? Oh, they will That's overshadow her. her. Huh? They will yeah, overshadow she's not, her. Uh, yeah, I don't, I mean, yeah, we're talking yeah, about the girl being a narcissist. Really she's not going to bring someone on her it, to well, share her tells, space that is going to overshadow her. That's not going to happen. Your craft. Because when you want to grow in your craft, you want to collaborate yeah. with people who take you to another level and you try to push yourself to rise to that level. I think so she knows her limitations. But you know what? This, this is... Say, I mean, because there's a lot that I can say now that I'm in on the suit that I don't like. The last thing that I'm going to say is that I am really, again, about growing in your craft. Like, I, and I want to acknowledge that, again, conceptually as a video, this seems ambitious for her because a lot of her videos are really kind of trite, a just typical relationship forlorn or you're dancing or you're whatever you know but she's using clips of some movies that were really important watershed cinema moments like norma ray and like network and she doesn't really understand what the fuck she's sampling and i have a problem with that if you yes, really yes. use these clips understand what they are and respect Patty Chayofsky, who is the screenwriter of Network, is rolling in his fucking grave right now because Network was a searing, searing, dark yeah, comedic yeah. critique of the entertainment yep. that was so brilliant that, that it is still relevant today. So mm -hmm. to have her using that, that iconic scene from Network to make this mm -hmm. about my mm -hmm. man take me for granted. He's waiting mm -hmm. to come mm -hmm. after I shoot this show to come and cook for him and iron his shirt. Mm -hmm. Shows that she doesn't understand what the fuck Network was about. Because I don't think she saw any of the movie. <laughs> no, no, no. I honestly, last, I do not believe. One last yeah. one fact. And, and the irony is that I found this on Latina.com. Um, <laughs> but the reason why they went to product placement in this video is because they didn't have, they ran out of money before the video 
know, because of J-Lo's grand vision, because of all the costumes, because of all the props, it was a process of life. I can't even, can I just jump in really quickly and say, yeah, yeah, we can't say in the same breath that she has a grand vision for the visuals and then, but the, doesn't seem to have a grand visual, I mean, a grand vision for the message or how, how it's going to land to its audience. I mean, across the yeah. board. So that's, that's my biggest critique of it is like, if you're going to use Norma Ray, because like you all just said, there's so many other meaningful issues that could have come at play here, more relevant more current than this second wave feminism. I think it's really interesting how she completely left out the 90s and the arts. She stopped at the 80s and then went to the present, which is interesting, right? Because that it's was awful. the time that she came into prominence, right? The 90s and the arts. That's the irony of her leaving those things out. So, and then using Hillary Clinton and using Patricia Arquette, she completely, definitely, Siri, you're right, identifies with white feminism. So her feminism is not intersectional. It And like Linda said, it does not acknowledge her own privilege, which is very intersectional. And that's, yeah, like... But do you also understand how wrong it is to have product placement in a feminist anthem when the commodification... The, 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 the commercialization... Her of, image. Well, the, the thing also... Well, not only that, but, you know, one of the biggest issues in feminism is how the female form of the female person is sold. There were a product. And you have product placement in a feminist anthem? Mm -hmm. And then, on top of that, stop using a 22-year-old white girl's fucking lyrics that has things like, you're not going to ride this train? You know, you come from the Bronx, girl. You know what riding a train means. So yes. Now, Thank you. And the reference to the curves. It's oh, my God. I saw that too. I, I, I heard that in the lyrics and then I saw it again and I was like, oh God. Oh God. Right. Well, what does that talk about like the sexual dynamic and, and that the, or what are you saying that the one thing we have to like stand up for ourselves with our men is to say, oh, you're not going to get this. I'm going to withhold sex. I mean, are we right. using the 1960s? Right. How fucking tone deaf are you? Like, and not only that, but to use these sem seminal moments in feminist cinematic history like Norma Ray like working girl and and show yeah. like this elementary understanding of what it means and its place in history because you're more fucking concerned about rihanna's boots get the fuck out of here i'm sorry i'm it's really it. it's really annoying it truly is yes. i feel the same way everything has to be a very superficial level with her yes. and I, yes. you know what again we give her too much credit sometimes because I have a love-hate relationship. There are some times I do go, I'm proud of the success. But then, yes. I don't see But what that. did she build that success on? See, that's the thing. Is that I, I think that, that we're excited to see someone at her level who's Latina, um, you know, who, who's Puerto Rican from New York City. I mean, those kinds of things do still matter to me. Like, oh, somebody achieved yeah. this amount of success. But, but then the thing is, the, you know, what was that success built on? That success was built on superficiality. Mm -hmm. Those superficial rom-com movies that she did for so many decades, you know, her 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 perfumes and la di da, you know, so it there's no depth to a lot of what she does. And we and I know we've gone back and forth as to whether that's her, whether that's her creative team, whether that's her creative team trying she to agrees appease to her. her. Even if it is her creative yeah, team. Yeah, she that's that's what I'm saying. That's why it's like a tug of war as to you know where this is because there's nobody telling her, listen, girl, right. um, this might not be a good idea to release this video one week after Lemonade when Lemonade set the world ablaze right now. You know, like like there's no one, and not to say that she couldn't ever release the video, but <laughs> even all of those things are relevant, right? I, I mean, the timing of these things, I know she's had the song for a little while, obviously, because it's been recorded and la-di-da, but um, you know, but like, it, it, aren't there people whose job it is to sort of think about this and, and sort of think about, oh, we're gonna release this at this time for this reason, um, you know, and then sort of, isn't anyone paying attention to what else is happening in the world to stop and say, this might not be the best time to release this. But again, I think in earnest, because of how her mind works, she thinks that this is something that people are gonna say, yay, we have like three feminist anthems that have come out this this spring alone, right? <laughs> we've got and now we've got Lemonade, and now we've got Ain't Your Mama. And, you know, I think she just thinks that that the, that the, 
the popularity of sort of what's been what's come out before is going to kind of uplift her or carry her or she's going to be able to get on the the coattails of that and it's not really happening it um, have, to be, have, we, have, we, have we talked about that weird old video that she did I was explaining just gonna say the video that. oh, okay. oh yeah, 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 do it do it do it go in there never calls it feminist she never calls it feminist she calls it empowering but she never calls it feminist and 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 there's and one sure giveaway mm. a woman is not particularly feminist is when she always needs to caveat i don't hate men i don't because she says that oh it's not that we don't love you it's just that we just love you we just don't want you to take us for granted for me a woman is not very far in her feminist thinking if she's afraid if she always has if she has right. to preface any statement about women's equality and worth mm -hmm. and value with by the way i don't hate men mm -hmm, mm -hmm. linda you were going to say something when, no, about, I, <laughs> about the about her explanation video uh yeah, and then I started looking at what people were saying. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I can't remember. If I remember, I'll jump in. Well, can I just jump in with something really quickly just in terms of, like, who's at the helm? Again, almost like Latina Magazine. Who mm -hmm. the hell is at the helm of this yeah. organization? Because let me tell you something. If, if one of her makeup artists had a troubled history, she would friggin' know about it. But Dr. Luke is one of the producers on this, on this list, and she doesn't know about it? Bullshit. Number one. Number two, mm -hmm. you know, did you did you guys hear about the time that she was in that last movie, The Boy Next Door, and people, um, and the, the I didn't see well, the boy in this the boy in this the boy in the, the guy next door gives her a book, right? I think it was. Yes. I remember. Oh yes, I remember that. The Iliad. It's it like, I can't do the first edition of the fucking movie. How is it that the movie that came and looks at the script and is like, whoa, whoa, whoa? How do you? None of that matters to her. She's the big guy with no. the muscles at the yeah. gym. Yeah. She yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's the yeah, yeah, yeah. dude yeah. at the gym who doesn't give a shit about anything but his muscles. I'm telling you. It's true. Oh, it's true. I mean, I, I, I quite frankly, I found that that live video that she did where she was sort of explaining the um, explaining the ancient mama video so interesting because like almost like a psychological study interesting <laughs> because I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute j-lo number one never explains her work so my first question is why is she explaining this work um and i assume it's because maybe some feedback came back that it's not the feminist anthem that she thinks it is or it's not the women empowerment anthem that she thinks it is um you know, and, I, and it almost makes me question, did you think that the audience, maybe the young audience, but did you think that the older audience who's been following your career wasn't going to get all of those um, vignettes and not know where they came from, that you felt like you had to explain where they came from? Um, I stopped watching after she mentioned Hillary Clinton, so sorry, I, I don't know what happened <laughs> at the end of that. <laughs> at the end of that video but um but but i just found that really interesting and then in the video she also says please call your radio stations and request the song okay. so it, it just is such a weird thing like j-lo you know the boss that? this boss right um it, it, who's who's running her her own you know um empire her own brand her own company you're you're explaining videos because you think they don't make sense to people, I don't know, or you feel like you have to justify what you did. You what um, you're asking for people video. like like you're a starting artist, Here's like a brand new artist. You're asking for people to to plug you on the. I mean, you're giving yourself a plug and asking people to request you on the radio. Um, it, it just all those things came Here's, off really weird to me. I'm glad you brought that up, Siri, because here's my theory as to why she needed to go on Facebook Live. So yeah. get closer to the mic because the song is not a hit. The song is not a hit. Yeah. And the, the spin machine is trying to tell us that this song is a hit. It is not a hit. It was released on April 7th. It debuted on the Billboard 100 at 61. It's only been on there for two weeks. It's only started last week. So I'm thinking that the video, which is cute costumes and period pieces, has mm -hmm. bumped the song up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because it's only been on the Billboard chart for two weeks, even though it's been out since April seventh. 
Yeah, I didn't know that. It debuted at 61, and it's only at 76. That happened, that happened song is with not a, a lot of her stuff. That happened with a song dance song that she mm. that was a bomb. She did on American Idol, and then, because I remember when the song came out, and I thought it was complete crap. Then she did it on American Idol, and the song was a hit. It was the same song yeah. from me. Yeah. Oh, that had come out. The one that's like la 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 I mean, you kind of, you aimed way too hard. Double A. Double A. She's not a minor league team. Yeah. Um, I, I, wish, I wish more for her. I wish she would give it to her. Hire a creative director. This does bring up a very interesting point that came up on the J-Lo Mystique, um, when we did the J-Lo Mystique, uh, which was, is this who she is as a person, yes. right? We were talking about, well, yes, <laughs> but we were talking about um, whether she's intellectual, right? Or whether she, and, and if she's not an intellectual person, can we really expect her to put out intellectual art or art that stimulates intellectual people? Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if yeah. there's an answer to that. And, and I, I don't think that she's, an intellectual person. Um, I, it's not that I don't think that she's smart, and it's not that I don't think that she's street smart. I think she's very street smart. She's smart. She's got business savvy, and she's a hustler, and she's gonna get whatever the hell she's going out for. However, um, you know, it, it, she doesn't have the depth that I think we would love for her to have, especially because she she is kind of helming or holding the reins to being the one star at her at that level right we and, you know uh, I but did, people I did, her music and they're gonna go and they're going to see her room. concert and they're they're watching her movies you know so it's the same thing that we were saying with latina magazine right as much as we want more you know or expectations are higher of of things like latina magazine and 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 people like j-lo there are still people who are buying their content right. like nobody's business I, there has been um, in the chat room has put in the chat room privilege watch and if um, and I'm guessing that it's about about intellectualism like intelligence is, mm -hmm. you know um, oh yeah because we you know yeah 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 because we're privileged because we're all here mm -hmm. very educated and oh um, my god but she has more privilege than anything else she has had yeah, but it's a different type of privilege and she might have well she, she, she has, has financial privilege she, she has exposure person. privilege you know um but, but here's the thing so so what i want to put out here and this is a question that we're always at i do think that had she, if she did not have the stature that she did and was not the only one with the stature that she has we probably would back off on we would let her be fluffy we would let her be successful we would let her live and I just think we want more from her because of her visibility and mm -hmm. because of her monopolizing, not that she's meaning to do this, but it's just what is true, her monopolizing the visibility. But I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna jump in here and say the same thing I said about Latina Magazine. If you use a Latina community, when you are pitching yourself as an artist, if you take that to a board and you say, I speak for Latinas and I, and I have this community behind me, then you take on the responsibility. We're not putting it on you. Mm -hmm. You're the one that says you speak for us. And I'll bet you anything, mm -hmm. the half of the endorsement that she gets is because she counts the power that she has within our community. So if you yeah. tell yeah. us, then you, you, yeah. better, you better speak for us then. And we I have wanna, a right here. It works both ways. I want to address something that Haiti Morales is saying so that I can better understand because I'm a little confused. So uh, it's the comment um, that what does... I guess a uh, J Lo's um, work mean to the everyday woman who hasn't read the books we read. We read. Um, mm -hmm. So the intellectuals like us need to check it. But why can't we critique what is is going out to so many people? We should be able to critique mm -hmm. right. what's 
put out. I don't know if it's she. I don't think she doesn't have the. She has privilege the way we do. Maybe she, no. She has a different privilege. She has a different privilege. She's privileged. See, privilege is a range of things. You know, right? We're, you know, privilege is fluid. It's not like you're privileged or you're not. It's we. She has wealth. She has visibility. She has mm -hmm. she, 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 that we don't. Right? Mm -hmm. But we are. We are well-read women, and we are intellectuals, and so that's the privilege that we have that we sh that she doesn't. Um, but this is why I think what we're doing is why what we're doing is so important because I mm -hmm. think it's on us to be that bridge. We're the ones who read the books. Right. We're the ones who can deconstruct this media. And part of the reason why we're doing this is so that anybody, you know, from the the secretary in her video to a PhD can join us in this chat and we can break this stuff down as a community regardless yeah. of what books we read. Because we have, we can break that down. I think that's our role. I think it's our role to, to break this down in a way that's accessible to folks who may not have read the books that we have. But I do hear what Idea is saying because if we come after Jennifer's intelligence, then we might really be alienating somebody who is has doesn't have the same, who has the same level of education or lack thereof that she does, who's listening to us, who is listening to us to learn how to deconstruct media and learning and learning what is the problem with the, with J Lo's video, and and if we and if we're attacking her intelligence or, or come, seeming to come off as we're not that they're saying that we mm -hmm, mm -hmm, whatever, mm -hmm. then that we alienate that same person that we're trying to reach and we're trying to make them understand why this video was not all that. Yeah, but the problem. No, but, but the problem is. Critique. I'm, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the the, 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 about the how we do it in the language that we use. And the problem, though, is that the 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 content that she's putting out. You know, it, this is not this is not about saying how, how can I phrase this. This is not about saying J Lo's a dummy. Um, however, the content that she that she's putting out is superficial. And that's coming from somewhere. We can't ignore the fact that that the content is superficial. We can't. Um, I agree. Yeah. You know, we we we, and that's the basis for why we're talking about this, right? Is the fact that there's so many things happening in the world today, and yet this is being put out to kind of speak to those issues. Yet it does it in a very surface way, right? So where does that come from? Because the the creative idea for this came from somewhere. So if it's not J Lo or it's like J Lo plus creative team, you know, nobody's thinking deeply on this, regardless of whatever their their educational background may be or whatever their their intellectual privilege they may have. You know, they're not they're not thinking deeply about it, and it seems like they're not and. I would venture to say that they don't think that their audience needs to think that deeply about it because right. that's what they're putting out. But we're not the well, audience. But also, can I, know that. No, can I just say well, something? Well, but, but yeah, but, that's a, but it doesn't matter who the, if the audience is 12-year-old girls or if the audience is, you know, beyond 12-year-olds are watching Lemonade, right? And they're, 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 being, they're being challenged in a much different way than a 12-year-old that's watching um, Ain't Your Mama. And I don't want to get into too much of like comparing between the two. I'm just saying that, you know, that, that 12 year old <laughs> but is watching. But I, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, so, so it's not, I mean, this is, I, I just want to be clear with everyone who's following us. This isn't really about saying that, that, you know, that us priv privileging our intellect over JLo's, but I think we do need to address the fact that the content that she puts out there is extremely superficial. And it at least makes me question the depth of what what she can do or what she's trying to do well, can I, and i wouldn't can, mind her being superficial if she would just own it it just works my nerves when people are superficial and and, and feign like they're deep just, right here's the like, thing guys can i just say something really quickly i think you know with all due respect haiti i think we throw that check your privilege thing and I, and, and oftentimes and i you know it, it serves to censor conversation i absolutely am going to go on the line and say JLo can come across as dumb. That's not about privilege. And she has the kind of privilege, by the way, that can buy you intelligence, that can buy you books, that can buy you an education, that can buy you the right creative team. And so, no, I'm not going to check my privilege. I'm going to say, you know what? You're coming across as dumb, and I'm not going to leave it there because that would be wrong. I'm going to tell you exactly. I'm going to break it down for you exactly why this is dumb, why this is a detriment to our community, and why we need to speak up for it. So I'm sorry. No, you know what? Go buy yourself a book. 
go watch lemonade sit down for an hour you know and then be, and ask yourself the tough questions why is my stuff not comparing why am i more worried about my makeup than i am about my staff you know i'm sorry but yeah no hold that tanto. we we need to we need to step up our game yeah I'm sorry. Lively debate is um, saying uh, some interesting things here. Um, does the superficiality reflect the intelligence of the author, or does it reflect the desire to reach a less intelligent consumer? Mm -hmm. And I, in this case, it might be both. But um, mm -hmm. I think that we keep we keep hitting a brick wall here in a way, in that. We can critique this, but we're never going to win the fight because when money is at stake, mm -hmm. that's what rules it all. So if there's a group of people that that love this product, they're gonna go after it no matter what, no matter how we tell them it's bad for them, they're gonna go after it. We are entitled to say what we feel right. about it. And you see this like with health food people, you know, health food freaks, like you got to go with the healthy, you know, and then the people who eat fats all day long and, you know, uh, trans fats and all that crap, they're sitting there going, yeah, whatever. It's the same. It's just, it's, it's silly, but it's the same kind of thing in that you're not going to, you're not going to change what people want or are willing to pay money mm -hmm. for. Money is always, unfortunately, the thing that determines what is successful. Mm -hmm. It sucks, but I think we have every yeah. right to say that it could be better. It could be better. Bullshit. Such a thing. Like to lemonade. Just like lemonade. It can be better. She should, in that weird Facebook video she put out, which was very awkward, the guy in the beginning is going, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my she didn't need it. Why did you just go? I just hate everything being exactly. so... Exactly. I hate everything being so controlled. Anyway. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, no. And I think that she took credit for the whole she, idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, in her position, I really do think that she had... Madonna had a team of people. I know her brother was her creative director. I think at this point, I mean, when you're that big, you should have a group of people creating ideas for you and then you come in just like uh, you know beyonce does hire the best people but she keeps with this i could see her going yeah and you know what i'll all the furniture could be pastel colors and i could be in pastel i could just hear her actually say these things uh -huh. in a meeting you know and then we could do norma ray and that whole norma ray oh. scene honestly it was bad because that was the one that was about the butt that was the one that was about the butt right. Yes, and the one where all the bottles. Fall. Yeah, I, yeah. I, you know, I was in lemonade, looking at the graffiti to see if Beyonce was trying to tell me something. Right. <laughs> I was looking at everything. She did. She did. What? And and I, and I and I just yes. have an issue with. I do have an issue with because I do have. She she's she's an actor and she's a musician and she's very much in these very visual media. And I really do think she it, it, it she was responsible for understanding the work that she was sampling. Yeah. And 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 it, you know, watch Norma Ray and understand why it was important and watch network but and understand why. Yeah. And you don't yeah. need and that's not a thing about and, and she does have the intelligence for that because this yeah. is her field. This right. is her craft. Yes. She, yeah. So yeah. she should yeah. know those things. She should understand. She's yeah, a, if she's in film, she should understand why network is a seminal you film. Like her why Norma Ray is a seminal film. If you are going to sample it in your work, so I do so, feel like she should be. She that is is fair to hold her responsible, and that and that she is intelligent enough to do that. She's just choosing not to put yeah. in that work. And so for me, it's mostly about what J Lo wants, and what J Lo wants is to be a star. J-Lo mm -hmm. wants to be a star. Mm -hmm. Without responsibility. To be a star. The, be a star. the other and thing that's is. Why her material yeah. is, yeah. you know, it isn't challenging audience because yeah. the demographic is not us, right? I guess saying something to the extent of like, but you know, we're making the assumption like the video, she says the video may be bullshit to some, but may have substantive meaning to others. It's not universal. What I want to say is that people like Jennifer Lopez and Mariah Carey, they they are not making things for women our age. 
They are making things for young people with disposable income, young people who um, haven't acquired or interested in, because they because you do acquire it at one point, in consuming entertainment and being critical about it. So it's not about their capacity to be critical. It's just about what they're desired. A lot of folks be like, I don't want that. And I don't want to watch my music video and have an analysis. It doesn't mean that they're not capable. They just don't want that from their entertainment. There's, and that's mm -hmm. the people that Jennifer Lopez is making. But I'm sorry. And music for. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, but there's a very interesting thing happening now because there are so many artists that are really becoming... Um, very you know vocal about their political stances about their stances on things that are happening in the society and all these things and it's getting received i wonder and i question um whether or not j-lo is afraid to take that kind of risk because you're right i think if she does she may lose some of those people who really are only interested in the fluff and don't she want to lose be, them because she wants to be you know she, does, she doesn't want to lose them because i guess maybe the people are the ones that that have you know, got her this far, but um, but hold on a second. Give it a then we'll, am I sorry? What's the difference <laughs> between J Lo's audience and Beyonce's audience? Because then what we're saying is, black audiences want more elevated craft, but Latino audiences don't. We just want love. Whoa, yeah. No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that um, Beyonce is having. Beyonce's commitment first is to herself, is to her evolution as an artist. And she is mm -hmm. trusting that her audience is going to come with her. Where's our trust? Huh? But you they are. It. That's we the thing. Have. They it's are. They, you know, Beyonce is she doesn't have it. Beyonce is taking some risks here. And maybe because she has such a loyal following, they will ride with her no matter what she puts out. But the, the thing is, is that Beyonce's on a journey and the the following is with her on that journey. And she People are taking whatever she puts out and, and it, you know, investing themselves and discussing it and thinking about it and watching it and, and really being part of it. So we're not, you know, at, no, I, that's what I'm saying. I wish we were. I don't, I don't think that we're not. I mean, we're all on this freaking journey. We're just frustrated well, we can't, by we it. Can't judge what the wearing training is and what the community is doing by J-Lo. That's dangerous. We shouldn't do that. That's that's. But the problem is, is that we we're, what's our. <laughs> but then we then we got to start talking about J Lo at some point, and we got to start talking about the people who really are putting out this right. content. Yes. Who are those? Okay, people? let's yeah. talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> who's, who's actually who doing those that? people? And that's, <laughs> yes, and that's kind of where I'm at with the J Lo conversation in general. I mean, it's hard. Do you guys who are watching us know? We really debated about whether we even wanted to talk about this damn video because part of us was just like. God damn it, we don't want to talk about her again, especially when when what she's doing is not that substantive. But we wouldn't be who we are. She's visible. We have to, this is the role we play. This is an important, we feel that what we're doing is, is important to just break this down for folks who are like, mm -hmm. why don't you love this stuff? It's just a video. No, it's not just a video. Mm -hmm. And that's why we, after so much going back and forth, we're like, look, we can't help ourselves. We have to talk about this. Mm -hmm. But I am at the point in the overall, I don't know about you guys, tell me where you are. I'm at the overall point of the JLo conversation that I just want to be on a, I, I just want to be on a search for someone else that is doing these kinds of things and mm -hmm. amplify mm -hmm. them so they can get to a JLo visibility and level because mm -hmm. those people are out there. I really mm -hmm. do believe they are out there, but you know, we keep, we kind of, you know, we keep on JLo because she is the one that's getting all the attention. We give her that attention, but maybe we should spend a little more time looking for, you know, looking for these, because they're out there. But no, but they are, and finding, and, and elevating them as a community. I know you, I know the four of us here, and a lot of people who watch us could probably name these people right away and whatever, but the Latino community as a whole, it, it, remember we talked about this? I said, you know, a colonized people is always waiting to be discovered. And mm. we just wait too much for corporate entities to tell us who we are and what we should like. But now, that's is, a very American thing. That is not a Latino specific thing. 
But right now, we're talking specifically about the Latino community and our relationship, particularly in the U.S. context, because I don't want to say that this is like this everywhere else. I don't know if this is like this in Mexico. I don't know if this is like this in Colombia and Brazil. I don't know if, if audiences there have, you know, have these, are, are, are at a different level of conversation about these things. But I'm at the point where I, I want us to stop waiting for corporate media to tell us who we should be supporting, who we should be spending our money on, what content we should be consuming, and to find these artists out there that we know exist. Yeah, but you know, um, we're not. That's not how it works, though, because a, a lot of it is top down. So what we're doing right now, the four of us, and hopefully other think pieces that will come out, is we are the we are the voices clamoring for the clean glass. Because mm -hmm. we can we can sit here amongst ourselves and say I love this person. I don't know what kind of groundswell that's gonna that's gonna create. But the corporate voices do listen to critical feedback. The difference has been is that we as a Latino community don't often give critical feedback. That's true. We apologize mm -hmm. for for attacking our icons. You don't see white people worried about how they're going to attack the you know their icons. They they bring down their icons all the time. Well, well that's because they have the luxury of knowing that they're not going to be judged. Well, we have to stop operating from the so yeah, range of their humanity. Sophia, I'm sorry. We have to op stop operating from a mindset of scarcity. We can get other icons. Right. And the way we do that exactly is saying. by raising our voices. I don't disagree with you. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. But I'm saying the reason why white people do that is because their humanity is already validated and they can critique one person without worried about being disappeared or stereotyped. But, you know, white people are not judged by, by the handful of fuckery of certain white people the way we are and the way other people of color are. You're right. So, but you're right. We do have to one point. But you're right. I, I, I guess we're on the same page, Maria. I yeah. think we, we, we have to believe that. And I don't know if as a community yet, as a community, we believe that. I don't believe we have our internalized oppression has been shed enough that we don't believe that because Latinos are the first ones to complain about positive images, positive images in a way that is very white identified. We don't, like you said, we don't I like to critique. We want to support everything, promise. even if it's crap. That's where we are in general. And I just want to get move past that. And you know, it's 154. So one way we can start to do that with whatever little platform we have with the with the 13 people that are watching, we can start to share some of it. And we're going to do this on every segment. We're going to end with some stuff that we really love that we hope that you guys will check out because we think yeah. you might love it too. And we think it deserves your support. Um, who wants to start us off? I'll go really quickly. Um, I personally love Jane the Virgin. Um, I just think it's it's smart. It you know It's very Latino-centric without getting you over the head with it. It's funny. I think it successfully weaves within a novella genre and pokes fun of it in a respectful way. In a way that, you know, the way we would talk about it with our with our grandmothers, like where we get that it's something of ours. So we don't make fun of it, even though we can poke fun of it without making fun of it, if that makes any sense. Um, and just overall, I just really enjoy that. And I think it's probably one of the most mainstream things that's doing Latino content well. Great, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I like um, well, too. I don't have uh, to see. Yeah, yeah, got it. Must see TV, but I do enjoy it when I watch. Yeah. It's I think awesome. it's important too. <laughs> Siri, you want to go? Um, Sure. Uh, right now, I'm really loving on La Borinquena, uh, the comic series that's going to be um, on stands this fall. Um, I'm really excited about it because uh, it centers around an Afro Latin and Afro Boricua um, superhero. And, you know, that's the kind of stuff that I didn't have growing up that I would love to have had. And I'm really looking forward to sharing that with my niece, um, you know, this fall when it comes out. So, uh, you know, I think we need to see more of those types of images. I thought it was really interesting that it kind of started off as like um, a, a sort of like a, not a mascot, but like, <laughs> you know, something to, to support the Puerto Rican Day Parade, but that it's going to grow into its own um, written series. So I'm really looking forward to that. And um, Sophia, I'm, I'm looking for a link. Yes, yes. Uh, I, everybody, you've got to um, check out the Get Some West series. 
by Angelo Lozada, Tammy Kubelet, and Sonia Gonzalez Martinez. Um, new season starts on June 9th. I just added the link to the chat stream. Okay. Um, this thing is hilarious. It's well written, it's well performed, and it's basically about you know a married couple that are still trying to keep the love light burning. Um, it, and what's awesome about it is is that it's very Latino. It's kind of like what, what Maria said. About, it's it, you know, it, it, it's universal without trying to dilute the Latinoness of the characters. And the, it, it, but I think anybody can watch this and enjoy it and relate to it. It just it's a it's universal issues of trying to keep things sexy when you've been in a relationship for a while, and it just happens to be told through a Latino cast. But not in a way where they're trying to like erase their Latino wisdom to, to be to to reach a white audience. They just reach a white audience because of the kinds of things that they're talking. It, it, I love it because it gets past the the old chancleta, Vix Vaparu jokes. You know, it's, it's good comedy. It's well written. The characters are relatable, believable, and it's really, really funny. So get some, get some. Maria loves get some. I love get some. So, um, well, I'm excited about a group, uh, it's a duo. It's a comedy duo out of Chicago. I've known them for quite a while. They Their roots are in theater. Um, they are absolutely brilliant. They're called the Venezuelan. I'm gonna uh, link their website. They just signed on with Fred Armisen um, to create a web series based on some uh, fictional place called De Venezuela. <laughs> uh, brilliant. And um, I'm excited to see what they do. They're really talented women, the both of them. Very funny, very talented. And they've been around for a while. That's it. Awesome. Yeah. You're the one who turned me on to them. I think it was they when, if I remember, Linda, it was when um, SNL did some skit that was really problematic regarding Latinos. Oh, it was about it was about SNL not hiring Latinas. Yeah, uh, and there still was, no Latinos. And there, were two, there were a lot of responses, but there were two particular responses that came out at that time. One that we kind of felt missed it, and one that nailed it. And I believe it was the Venezuelan that nailed it. Shared was the one that was nailing the SNL critique. There was another one that was like. Their whole answer was, well, well, hire us SNL, and was kind of doing the same thing that they were saying that SNL was doing was foul. <laughs> but the Minnesota, right? Did, well, they did the good version. Was really great, and you, so you, you turned, you were the one who were turning on a lot of people on Facebook on, onto them with that piece. Right. The other ones kind of did the dumb version of it, and I think the Minnesota did the, the more polished version of it. They're really smart girls, and they know how to do comedy well, and co and we can we can have a whole show on comedy too <laughs> yeah on the long list of things that we're going to talk about <laughs> eventually <laughs> well everybody Alrighty. it is two on the dot thank you Alrighty. for joining us again thank you, thank all. you to all my kick-ass sisters in latinas chat media i love you i appreciate love you, you. thank you for you know pushing me to think about certain things and all you in the chat stream yeah. asked really good questions yeah and pushed back you know we don't want this to be a a a a, a, a what do you call it, Maria? You have echo a, chamber. An Just echo, echo chamber. chamber. <laughs> so oh, we're strong and we're passionate, but we are listening and we are taking into account, you know, even if we're stubborn. <laughs> Everybody have a fantastic weekend and thanks for signing in. We will be sharing the link. If you know other people who want to watch yes. it once it's once. Um, yeah, it's, please we'll, share. We'll, we'll keep sharing it on YouTube and on the Latinas chat media page. So find us on Latinas chat media. Keep the conversation going too. Okay. Thank you. I'm also going to try to capture everyone's links that you guys put in of things that you were sharing that you loved, which I think it was awesome oh, that you participated yes, with that. You. So maybe we can put put that up on the Latinas chat media page on FB. That'd be That's great. A great idea. Yeah. So thank you for sharing. Thank Thanks, you. Everybody. Have a fabulous All right, guys. Have a wonderful Saturday. Have a wonderful Sunday. Sunday. Be good, mi gente. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Copy.